Good morning. Somebody say, Jesus keep me near the cross. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, Jesus keep me near the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus keep me near the cross. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's sing with uplifted voices. Oh.
Where would 
not be, you would have been left in the drug alley. You would have been left on the side of the road. He kept my enemies away. Then he left the sun. Hallelujah. 
of being women, boys, and girls. And I want you to have a praying spirit today. I want you to pray with me. With all of the turmoil going on in this world, Jesus is soon to come. You got Trump on the right and the Democrats on the right and you got Israel on the left and you got Ukraine on the left and in front of us we have fires behind us, we have floods, there's trouble hallelujah on every hand thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord somebody say he Thank you, Lord. 
Mm. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. He's able to do just what he said he would do. He'll do what no other power can do. In the book of Exodus, the 18th chapter, we're moving through Exodus, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And it's kind, it was, it was, it was, it was prophetic for us to deal with a text that was talking about brothers fighting. And then the same weekend, Israel and Palestine, Palestine and the Palestinians, the Israelites are fighting. This week we're looking at Exodus 18, verse 1, it says, I just want to read verse 1 and 2 again. When Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Sephora, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back. I'd like to speak to you from the subject of thing. We are having, hallelujah, a family reunion. If I was... Uh, <clears throat> In my own church, I'd have you online turn to your neighbors, but you may or may not have a neighbor. If you have a neighbor, if you're in here and you have a neighbor, tell them we're having a family reunion. And that's not a request. That is, that is an option, hallelujah, from God. Here we find out in this curriculum, this Sunday morning, that Moses was separated. Hallelujah. Somebody said hallelujah. The man of God had found himself in a separated household. When you have one address and your wife has another address, you're either separated or divorced. They don't say to what degree he was separated. But I believe Moses turned his wife back over to his father-in-law and didn't believe he was coming back. Hallelujah. Moses found himself believing in God and doing what God says but not understanding that God could protect him so I think he might have even said to Sephora I'm just in my parenthetical mind even told her Sephora you can find yourself somebody else I'll probably never come back this way huh Pharaoh has anything to do with it, he's going to kill me dead. Hallelujah. He, but I'm going to do what God told me to do, but you can stay here. The issue with that, brothers and sisters, is that the text is not clear, but if you go back to Exodus, the fourth chapter, you will see where Moses found himself found himself in a situation where God was 
getting ready to kill Moses for not obeying his directive to circumcise his son. Moses was in a foreign land. Some say Moses had found himself in the homeland of his wife, but this text says in the land of Midian, but we know Moses' wife was an African. And he found himself in a position to disobey God. But he, instead of following God's word and instructions on what to do, he he could have been in Ethiopia. But we know the government that his father-in-law was tied to was in the land of Midian. But there's a famous painter that painted a picture of Moses and his wife, Jacob Jordan's, of Moses and his Ethiopian wife. But we see in the text this morning and the clear understanding is is that God does not have races in the Bible. Races are constructed and developed by men. There is only one race, that is the human race. So Jethro, the father-in-law, who was in the land of Midian and a priest of the Midianites, he did not want to be associated with Moses. When they first got together, Zephora and Moses, but we then have this familial tie where Moses is with his wife and God says, Moses circumcised your son Moses refused. Mo God was coming after Moses to kill him. And Sephora took a rock and, and circumcised her own son. Some say that this is the reason Moses left. I don't believe this is the reason because she saved Moses' life. And now, going back to Egypt, coming out of Egypt through the Red Sea, they send word back to Jethro. I'm coming back, and not only am I coming back, but I'm coming back with riches, and I'm coming back with all over a million of my people, and I am, hallelujah, I am alive. So Jethro, it says, 
Moses' father-in-law, receiving this message, took Sephora and, hallelujah, his, his grandsons back to Moses. And when he got there, hallelujah, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons. And I believe Moses then named his sons and gave them two names in verse 4. Eleazar, which means for God of my father, said he was my help. Hallelujah. And delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. He could not have named his son that until after the deliverer had gone. Because he wasn't sure. Moses had left his wife, hallelujah, back at home and said, I'm giving you, can I, can I use my imagination, some separation papers because I don't know if I'm coming back, but I know God told me what he said. But I want you to see the beauty of what Moses missed out on. Moses went back to Pharaoh without a wife. Moses went through the Red Sea without a wife. Moses went through all of that, can I say hell? All of that hell. Hallelujah. In the wilderness with these people, without a wife to wipe, hallelujah, his forehead and to, and to, and to rub his back. The same woman that had saved him from the hand of God. What you think won't help you. Thank you, Lord. Is what God sent to help you, which is a helpmate. But we see here the separation of family. For familial ties had been broken because of fear. Fear is what leads to break down in familial relationships. That our relationships, most of the time we argue with family and some say, what's wrong with that? They are not like friends. Friends come and friends go. But God gives us family to show his relationship with us. It is a prototype of the church. And the devil will destroy marriages. He will destroy familial ties. Brothers and sisters, brothers and brothers, sisters with sisters, mothers with husbands, fathers with wives, hallelujah, fathers and parents with children, children with parents, hallelujah, aunties and uncles and cousins all fight because of fear. If truth be told, <coughs> we find many families argue most when mother's sick or mother has gone on to be with the Lord. But I'm here to tell you, they really are not angry with each other. They're just afraid. Some say, what, what grief is not fear. Grief is the worst kind of fear. Grief is your mind terrified of the reality of loss. And you can't comprehend loss or impending loss. So your mind operates as if you have not uh, been experienced with reality. It's basically your mind 
mind saying what is is not so. Yes, I find in the text that this family and families break up because of fear. Moses' father-in-law did not believe in his God. Moses' father-in-law was an unbeliever. So familial reunions, family reunions bring salvation to the family. You see, they didn't, they didn't argue about who was right and who was wrong. They just said, look at what God has done. Look at the powerful God we have that has kept us through storms and rains. Hallelujah. Heartache and pain. Last week, we saw two families and descendant generations, Amalek, the descendants of Esau, fighting with the descendants of his brother Jacob in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Yes, but this week, we see families coming together in a state of reunion. And we have to be honest and come to the understanding that if we're really saved, if we're really, really saved, we can forgive anybody of anything who also is in the family of God. Hallelujah. I am, yes, looking now at Jethro. Jethro could have been angry and said, you and your God went off and left us. You and your God went through it. But Jethro said, if your God can deliver you from the hands and the sword of Pharaoh, if your God can deliver you from the waters of the Red Sea, if your God can make manna fall from heaven, if your God can make water come out of a rock, if your God, hallelujah, I'm getting excited, can beat the Amalekites, hallelujah, and I'm looking at your warriors now, you want what you're fighting with is not state of the art, equipment. I've seen you. In other words, I've seen you fight. Hallelujah. And you can't fight. But you come out <coughs> a winner every time. Hallelujah. When you say I'll never see you again. Hallelujah. What you're doing is denying hallelujah God's reality to come in the face of your family when they said you never make it when they said you never be here today just show up at the family reunion looking good smelling good you used to be on drugs but show them how God has delivered you they thought you would die they thought you should have been dead long time ago but show up hallelujah hallelujah and say look what the Lord has done he brought me out of darkness I'm walking in the light look what the Lord hallelujah has done is there anybody here thank 
you, Lord, who has said, I will not, yes, go back to my family. never see them again. What we're really doing is denying the power of God. But I see Moses and Zephora reuniting and Jethro seeing the two people he never thought would be in the same room again. And it says I see God's handiwork in your life. I see that God brought a father back to his children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see, I see, I see. Yes, a family reunited. Yeah, yeah. And Jethro. Moses' father-in-law came, yes, and went out to meet, Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and did obeisance and kissed him. Uh, and they asked each other, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. Yes, I haven't seen you. Yes, yes, in quite a while. Yes, I haven't seen you. Yes, in a while. Well, it's good to see you. You ought to let somebody who you haven't seen in a while show up and tell him. Moses saying, Oh Lord, you restored my family. Lord, you restored my wife. Lord, you restored. Yeah, I see Jethro. Yeah, yeah. Say if you God. Can put families back together again. If your God can deliver you from the hands of a homicidal murderer, if your God can deliver you from natural disasters, if your God can deliver you from starvation, if your God, yeah. Can deliver you. I've seen the time when your lights were cut off. I've seen the time when your water was cut off. And God stepped in your house and gave you the resources to pay off your water bill and light bill, gas bill. God knows God brought you from a mighty old way. Jeff Rowe said, baptize me. I want to be in your family. I want to be in your family. Jeff Rowe said, I want to be a child of God. Jeff Rowe said, I got gods, but my gods can do what your God can do. My God can
can restore. God can restore. God can restore. Hallelujah. God can fix what is broken. God can heal what the devil has destroyed. God can do just what he said he would do. And no other power will do what the Lord has done. No one else can heal. No one else can deliver. If you are outside of the ark of safety, I want you to be saved now. Go to a waste of living water and say, I want to be saved. We will call you this week. We will pray with you and lead you in the prayer of salvation. If you have not given your offering, take a moment now and go to the links at the bottom. You can sell or you can cash out. Dollar sign, Oasis Living Water. Hey, Oasis Living Water. Waters with an S at the end. Oh. 